Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You know how it is these days, information overload everywhere you look, right? But hey, that's why we're here, to really dig into some fascinating stuff. Today we're tackling the demon haunted world, the Carl Sagan classic. A classic for a reason. I mean, it's a bit hefty, I'll give you that. Yeah. But Sagan had this way of making complex stuff, you know, science, feel like, well, a thriller almost. Absolutely. It's like he really believed that science wasn't just, you know, facts and figures, but a way of looking at the world, a way of thinking. And boy, could we use a little more of that kind of thinking these days. Couldn't agree more. And that's what I love about Sagan's style. He brings this, this infectious enthusiasm to everything. He wants you to question everything, to think for yourself. That's what makes it so captivating. Yeah, like right off the bat, he starts talking about, well, himself, you know, as a kid, totally fascinated by the world, asking a million questions, as kids do. But, and this is the sad part, his teachers, they just weren't into it. More into rote learning than real curiosity. It's a story I've heard too often, sadly. Such a missed opportunity, right? Absolutely. But for Sagan, it really solidified this idea that we all have that capacity for wonder. We just need someone to nurture it. Exactly. And that's where, he argues, skepticism comes in. Skepticism, that's the key. Now, before anyone tunes out thinking, oh, I don't want to be, like, cynical or anything, that's not what it's about. Not at all. It's about asking questions. Like Sagan says, it's like buying a used car. Perfect analogy. You're not going to just take the seller's word for it, are you? You're going to poke around, kick the tires, maybe get a mechanic to look at it, are right? Got to be sure. Same with information. Same with anything that sounds too good to be true. And Sagan... He even took this skepticism and applied it to, get this, UFOs. Oh, yeah. He went there. He was relentless, which I guess makes sense. If you're going to apply skepticism, you've got to apply it across the board, right? He didn't just want to debunk things, yeah. though. It's not about that. It's about understanding why people believe what they believe. That's a great point. And it's something we're going to dig into a lot more as we go along. But before we get too sidetracked by aliens, it's important to remember Sagan wasn't just trying to tear down bad ideas. He wanted to replace them with something better, a way of thinking that could help us make sense of it all. It's about giving people the tools, right? Yeah. To think critically, to figure things out for themselves. And when it came to stuff like, oh, I don't know, UFOs, alien abductions, all that, he brought that same skepticism, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. He dedicated a good chunk of the book to it, actually. Mm -hmm. Analyzing those stories, digging for explanations. Because let's face it, those stories, they're compelling, right? They grab you. Yeah. Did he? Did Sagan ever buy into any of it? Well, he took it seriously. You got to give him that. He wasn't dismissive. He wanted to understand the appeal, why people were so ready to believe, like the face on Mars, for instance. Remember that? Oh, yeah. How could I forget? Those blurry pictures, everyone saying it was proof of Martians, seemed plausible at the time. Right. And back then, the images weren't as good. Now we have much clearer pictures, but back then. Anyway, Sagan, he talked about this thing, pareidolia. It's where we see patterns, faces, whatever, in random things. Like seeing a bunny in the clouds. Exactly. Our brains are wired to find meaning, even when it's not really there. Part of how we're wired, I guess. So we're hardwired for storytelling, even if we make up half the story ourselves. But that doesn't explain the alien abductions, does it? That feels different. Right. So Sagan, he digs into sleep paralysis. You ever experienced that? Scary stuff. You're awake, but you can't move can't talk and you hallucinate like crazy. Sounds terrifying. I can see where that would tie into those stories. And he makes this connection, right? A lot of these abduction stories, they share these common threads, even across different cultures. Mm -hmm. Makes you wonder how much is real? How much is our minds playing tricks? Or our culture influencing us. We're surrounded by these narratives. It's bound to seep in. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what Sagan's getting at. We got to be careful, not jump to conclusions. Like, he tells this story about the Chinese Lunar Harvest Festival. They noticed this dip in death rates around that time. Sounds mysterious. What was it, some magical thing? Not quite. Turns out older women who were key to the festival, they'd be so busy with preparations, they'd basically postpone dying just for a oh, bit. So wait, seriously, that's wild. Right. It's about looking deeper beyond the surface. Otherwise, we end up believing anything, no matter how wacky. We see a correlation. We assume a cause. It's so easy to do. It's like we see what we want to see sometimes. Our brains love a good story, even if it's totally made up. And that's where Sagan gets serious, you know? Yeah. It's not just harmless fun to buy into these things. It can be downright dangerous. Yeah, he talks about the witch hunts. Right. Talk about a dark chapter in history. Thousands killed, just based on what? 
superstition, fear. It's terrifying how easily that can happen. And that's his point, isn't it? We need like a scientifically literate public to guard against that kind of stuff. Exactly. Hmm. Knowledge is power, as they say. Yeah. But it's got to be the right kind of knowledge, right? Based on evidence, critical thinking. So how do we get there? How do we cultivate that kind of thinking, not just in ourselves, but on a larger scale? Education. That's the key. Yeah. Sagan, he was a huge advocate for getting kids excited about science early on. Yeah, I remember that feeling, you know. As a kid, reading about space, dinosaurs, just like your mind being blown wide open. That sense of wonder. That's what we got to tap into. Because it's not just about memorizing facts, right? It's about how to think, how to question, how to learn. And how to keep asking those questions no matter how old we get. There's always more to discover. It's like Sagan said, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. And who knows, maybe it's one of our listeners who discovers it. Maybe so. There you have it, folks, a little taste of the demon-haunted world. If you want more, and trust me, you do, go check out the book, keep those brains engaged, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive.